Lord, the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, comes in and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come then, all your nations, sing of the Lord's goodness, my Lord is our praise and thanks. Well, good morning and a really warm welcome to our online service from Tunbridge Parish Church on Palm Sunday, this special day in the church's calendar when we remember Jesus riding into Jerusalem. Join with me in this sentence um, now as we say this together. Shout for joy. All you people of Jerusalem, look, look, your king is coming to you, triumphant and victorious, but humble and riding on a donkey. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed, blessed is he who comes, comes in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Amen. It was a welcome from me and my family and from Devon as well as we sharing this service with you. Now, before we sing our first hymn, we have a video clip from Andy Page, and he is showing us how to make a palm cross to help us get in the mood for this special day and before we sing our first hymn. So over to Andy. Good morning, everybody. Now, normally on Palm Sunday, we will be giving you one of these in church. But today, uh, we can't give you one because that would require a lot of work. So instead, I'm going to show you how to make one of these. A paper version. It's quite simple. And what you're going to need is a sheet of A4 paper. If you've got one. Uh, if you've not got one, then you can try and use something smaller or bigger. Uh, it'll just look a little different. And from it, what you need to cut is a centimetre wide strip from the longest edge. So whatever bit of paper you've got longest edge centimetre wide strip. If you're going to make it along with me, do that nice and quick and we are going to go rapidly through how we make a palm cross. Let's go. So here we have our strip of paper. And what you're going to do is you're going to take it and at about the somewhere between two thirds and three fifths of the way along it, you're going to fold it to the right to make kind of an L. Once you've done that, you're going to fold this three times round. After three times, you're going to take this downward bit and fold it around the back. 
you then poke the long bit through the hole in this. As you can tell, not necessarily the easiest thing. Then take the short bit and you're going to fold it through the back of there. This is then the cross beam of our cross. And then with this long bit remaining, you're just going to fold it back the way it came. There is the top, and there is one palm cross. Well, I hope you guys either had or have fun making your paper palm cross. Why don't you try decorating it as well? There's lots of different things you could do. You could write on it, you could colour it, whatever you want. And why not also keep hold of it through the rest of the service? You could wave it during the songs, you could hold it during the prayers. And if you want to share a photo of it with us, then we would love to see it either on social media or via email. But I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Today is the last day of Sunday Club SOS and Refresh before the Easter holidays. So if you're joining us, we look forward to seeing you. But otherwise, have a great day time off over the Easter break. Good morning everybody. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> well, let's sing now that uh, very well-known Palm Sunday hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. So let's sing now. to that part in our service where we know that we ought to say sorry for the things that we know are wrong in our lives and we just pray now for forgiveness so will you join with me in this prayer of confession on palm sunday the crowds worshipped jesus on good friday they shouted for him to die let us who also worship him confess that we have sometimes rejected him and ask for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus Christ, you come to us in peace, but we shut the door of our mind against you. 
in your mercy, forgive us and help us. You come to us in humility, but we prefer our own proud ways. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. You come to us in judgment, but we cling to our familiar sins. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. You come to us in majesty, but we will not have you reign over us. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. Lord, forgive our empty praise. Fill our loveless hearts. Come to us and make our lives your home forever. Amen. Hear God's tender words of comfort for his people. Your struggles are ended. Your sin is paid for. God will show us his glory and we will receive the grace of forgiveness at his hand through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, we come to our notice spot in our service and there are two notices from me and then there's a, a clip about our A to Z, which for today is J for Japanese mission. But first, my two notices. Firstly, a big thank you for all of you who've donated Easter eggs, 165 of them in all. These have now been taken over to Fegans in Tunbridge Wells and will be distributed by them over Easter. And then there's secondly, the notice for those of you who've been knitting flowers, not me, I'm pleased to say, to decorate the churchyard at Peter and Paul. Please contact the parish office to arrange delivery or collection by this Tuesday. That's the 30th of March at the latest, if that's okay. Thank you. Let's watch our video clip. Hello, I'm Celia Groom. I'm standing in this lovely church of St. Saviour's in Tunbridge, and I've been able to stand here to show you our MAG board, because I'm the MAG representative, and I look after the Gelsthorpe family, who are based under OMF in Japan. Um, now, you may be able to see that Tokyo is here. They're right high up in the north part in this area here, in a really rural part. This is the family here and they are probably in the most beautiful blossom time in spring. We've got the Four Seasons, Hanamaki, which is the area that they are in. Hi, Hi we're the Girls Thoughts. My name is Chris and I'm 14. My name is Sarah. I'm Mark. My name is Isaac and I'm 12. My name is Caleb and I'm 10. Thank you so much for all of your support. We're missionaries sent out from the UK by OMF International and we work here at Hanamaki Grace Church in northern rural Japan. Today I want to tell you about the past, present and future of this ministry. First the past. This church started in 2014 and between then and now we've seen hundreds if not thousands of people hear the gospel through gospel talks and events like children's events, teaching English and German and all kinds of other outreach. We've had the privilege of seeing three people become Christians and join our fellowship. In September of last year, with the support of both people abroad and in Japan, we've been able to buy the building I'm now stood in. With the first floor has been transformed up so that we have a large worship space, uh, office space and meeting rooms where we can hold events. The present. Let me tell you about a couple of exciting things we've got going on at the moment. One of which is we've just started the Christian Basics course. Three of our church members have invited friends who've come 
and started to hear about the gospel, please pray that they'll come to know the Lord Jesus for themselves. Secondly, we're using video games uh, as an outreach to elementary school children. We come and play video games together. Minecraft, very popular video game here in the church building. Uh, and we learn about the Bible together through YouTube videos. Uh, please pray that this can be a fruitful ministry uh, amongst elementary school children. The future, we, from April next month, we will start to reform the second floor of this building so that it can become a separate apartment where short-term missionaries can come and live while they support us and work here in Hanamaki. Uh, please pray that that work will go smoothly, we'll have all the funds that we need and that people will be able to come and support this work. We are also looking ahead in the long term to calling a pastor to this church uh, and that it will grow through people becoming Christians so that it can be a self-supporting church and we can begin work in another place. Thank you for all your support. God bless you. Well, we are conscious that we've got so much to be thankful for as a church. And let's do that now in a short prayer. Blessing and honour, thanksgiving and praise, more than we can utter, more than we can conceive, be to your name, O God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, by all angels, all people, all creation, forever and ever. Amen. Now before our reading and Devon brings us God's word, we sing the song, King of Kings, Majesty. entry into Jerusalem. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? 
Tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Morning. On this wonderful, slightly windy Sunday morning, I want to talk about trusting in Jesus, which isn't always easy, especially in the uncertainty of the world we're in at the moment. But before we start, let's pray. Father God, I thank you that we can always look to you. I pray you would help us to hear your word this morning with open hearts. In Jesus name. Amen. So here at Tunbridge Parish Church, we are based in the wonderful town of Tunbridge in Kent. And because of that, we have a lot of lovely countryside. So it's not unusual to see a tractor driving down the road or a horse being ridden down the country lanes out for a walk. And we learn when we go past these in our cars, past the horses, to drive slowly so they don't become afraid. The movement of the car doesn't scare them. The sound of the car doesn't scare them. We learn to drive past slowly and often a very thankful rider will nod in huge gratitude that we've done the right thing. Oh, thank you very much. And in this story of Mark, from verse 8, Jesus is riding into the town on a small young donkey, a colt. Now, not only is it a young donkey, it's a donkey that's never been ridden. But in verse seven, we read that the two disciples bring the colt back and Jesus gets on the donkey straight away. There's no bucking from the donkey. There's no having to settle the donkey or walk the colt round with Jesus on it. Yeah, okay, he's comfortable with you on him. They just set off into town. How amazing is that realisation for the two disciples that even the creatures of the world are calm in Jesus's presence. But at the moment, we're probably not feeling a lot of peace. Things are changing a lot and we may feel quite frustrated or like we want to kick our legs and shout just like those disciples may have thought the cult would have done. But Jesus is here today to say, I hear you and I'm here to bring you peace, just like that donkey. And aren't you more precious than a donkey? So he turns up on this donkey into Jerusalem not a stallion or carried in or a beautiful horse-drawn carriage. He turns up on a donkey, but that donkey wasn't a second or even third choice or something the two disciples came back with because it's all they could find. It was the choice. There was no, if you could go find me a Maserati, that'd be good. It was, Go find me a young donkey. That'd be great. And yeah, if you have any trouble, yeah, just say it's for me, don't worry. 
he knew it was strange to ask them to go and get it. The disciples were probably thinking, sorry, what? But God had made a plan. We see all over the New Testament people following Jesus. To his disciples in Matthew 4 verse 19, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 20 verse 34, immediately they started following him. John 6 verse 2, a large crowd followed him. But here we see in verse 2, we hear Jesus asking the disciples that were with him to go ahead of him. Now, even though physically they were going ahead of Jesus, spiritually, Jesus had already gone ahead of them. He says in verse three, if you have any troubles, tell them the Lord needs it. He had made a plan and he kept them safe. Now in the Old Testament, in around 516 BC, we read in Zechariah 9 verse 9, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Then fast forward over 500 years, and Jesus comes into Jerusalem on that very colt fulfilling exactly what was foretold over 500 years ago. He does not forget. He is so true to his word and always keeps his promises. We can trust him and not just with small day-to-day -day things or even bigger plans, but with our actual lives, our souls and the things that make us, well, us. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Psalm 37 verse 4 to 5, trust in him and he will act. Psalm 33 verse 20, he is our help and our shield. And in Isaiah 12 verse 2, I will trust and I will not be afraid for the Lord God is my strength and my song. So rewind from today to almost 70 years ago, and we're at the Queen's coronation. Insane amount of crowds in um, outside Buckingham Palace to wave to Her Majesty in all her splendor, all her fine jewelry, after she's just traveled from Westminster Abbey, a fine church with gold everywhere, and where many ceremonies would have been held before. She entered our lives as a queen and what an event I'm sure that was. But rewind from there another couple of thousand years and we see Jesus entering this town on a lowly colt, dust probably all over him. In the heat, everyone was probably very sweaty he probably had his feet touching the floor and potentially looked a bit silly. There was no fine jewellery or splendour or majesty, but he is the finest jewel there is and we are the most precious jewel in his eyes. He is splendour. He is a majestic king. Yet he came into our lives as a man, as our friend to say, here I am, and I just love you for exactly who you are. I don't need a Maserati to impress you because I'm not here to be impressive or show you my earthly things. I'm here because you are important. I'm here to fulfill prophecy. In our passage this morning in Mark 11, Verse 11, we read that Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple and looked around. And Jesus says, not only am I here now, today, on this donkey, looking around this temple, I'm going to be here always. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, come wind, rain, come day or night, I'm here. Jesus doesn't come in and say, 
oh, oh, sorry, you're in a meeting. Or, oh, have I interrupted your lunch? I'll come back. Or, oh, I'll come back in a bit when you've put the kids to bed. No, he's with us in all those situations, helping us, looking after us, and just continually, day after day, pouring his love over us and saying, you have got this. Acts 23 verse 1 says, take courage. Matthew 9 verse 2, to the paralysed man, lying on his mat, Jesus says, take courage, my son, your sins are forgiven. In Mark 6 verse 50, to the disciples, when Jesus was walking on the water, they thought he was a ghost. Jesus says, take courage, it's me, don't be afraid. Jesus is so trustworthy. He keeps all the promises he speaks over our lives and says, take courage, it's me, don't be afraid. So next time you're driving around and you have to go slowly past a horse, remember this story and remind yourself that Jesus is our peaceful king, our humble king who is always with you. I'm going to close us with a prayer. Father God, you are a God who is trustworthy and who loves us. I thank you that you hold us in your hands and call us your own. Help us to know that more and I pray that everyone hearing my voice now will know a renewed sense of your love, of your peace, of the amazing plans you have for us. In your almighty name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, Devon, for your words and that reassurance of our relationship with our Lord. Now, before Jenny uh, McPherson leads us in prayer, let's affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave, he became as we are. As a man, he humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God raised him on high and has given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. As his children, let us pray to Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for any blessings that you have provided, especially during these troubled times, for any protection, any recovery, any special medical care and for those who have given it, for your loving arms when we've had cause to mourn, for all those working to sustain our daily lives and for the beauties around us and for our freedom to enjoy them. But, dear Father, for many there have been great hardships, overwork, loneliness, illness and bereavement, we pray to you for your presence, comfort and healing power for all who are suffering in any way. Father, hear us. Father, we thank you most of all for your son, Jesus, who listened to you and obeyed you, even going forward to danger and death. On this Palm Sunday, we remember his courage as he travelled to Jerusalem and pray that we too will listen for your voice 
and that each day we too will be obedient, so that we may do your will in service and witness. In the words of Richard of Chichester, thanks be to thee, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits that thou hast given us, for all the pains and insults that thou hast borne for us. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly, day by day. Amen. Father, we thank you for the wonders of your creation and in it the forces that enable life on this planet. But we know that it's a hurting world, damaged by those human desires for power, greed and control that lead to cruelty and war and displaced, hungry and homeless people. We pray to you for all suffering people and for all world and local leaders, that they may become aware that love is better than hate, and that between them ways will be found for fears to be dispersed, and the spirit of your love and compassion to rule. Help each one of us, too, to make our ways of life to become less damaging to the environment. Father, hear us. Father, we thank you and pray for your church across the world, and today especially for us here, for the leadership that works faithfully to teach and encourage us in our faith, for all who prepare and execute our online services, for those working for the children and young people, for the wardens and PCC, and those in offices who sustain our finances, fellowship and community. Lead us together by your Holy Spirit to help to build your kingdom here. Lead us this week to travel faithfully with Jesus towards the cross and to rise with him at Easter. Father, hear us. And we gather all our prayers together in the words that Jesus asked us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining us for our service this morning in this act of worship together. We hope that we all may have time to reflect during this special week before Easter of all that Jesus has done for us. Do join in with us for the other services and reflections which we will be putting on during this week. But let's now pray for God's blessing. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne on high, and the blessing of our Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us always. Amen. Thank you. 